There's Guns N' Roses and November Rain on the Island's Rock, 100.3 The Q. Well, this is something new, definitely. We have bagpipers giving Ed Bain and his accordion a run for the money here at the Rock Research Center. Oh, getting closer. They're going to be uh, coming in here to the uh, Q control room momentarily. Reason being, we have a, a crowd here, actually. I think our listenership might have just gone up to 12, actually. The uh, Highland Games, of course, at Topaz Park this weekend. The Q, very uh, proud to be sponsoring that one more time. And uh, we're going to be chatting about this here momentarily. Excellent. I was just saying, you're giving Ed Bain a run for his money there with the, uh, you know, with him and the accordion. I think you guys should maybe battle it out. Next week, I think that would be fun. All right, gather around the microphones. Don't be shy. Oh, oh, they have prepared notes. Oh, I feel now. I feel terribly unprepared. <laughs> All right, and please introduce yourself. Uh, Jim Maxwell, President, Victoria Highland Games Association, and the fantastic bagpiper, as um, well. <laughs> yes, no, that is certainly uh, better than uh, any of us could do. And uh, we got a couple of heavy event guys here, eh? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Hi. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself. Uh, Dirk Bishop. I'm from New Brunswick. I'm in uh, to throw in the games this year. Uh, it's a CSAF, uh, Canadian Scottish Athletic Federation, uh, Canadian Championship. So what events do you take part in? All of them. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. We have to. It's a, a cumulative point system where uh, whoever gets the most points at the end of the day wins. So you have to do all the events. Okay. Now, how heavy are those cabers? Because those things look really big. They're actually heavier than they look. Uh, so, at least that's what we like to say. Yeah. Uh, they're ranged uh, depending on, uh, we have different size cabers everywhere you go. Uh, some are maybe a little bit lighter, but uh, a lot longer. So, they may be 20, 22 feet long wow. and uh, weigh, you know, 150, 175 pounds for the, for the big ones and the pros. They're right down to the women, say, you know, 50, 60 pounds. That's, uh, that's more than the Q's Rody Chris Loran. 145 soaking wet. Yeah. And apparently you're taking part in this this weekend? Yeah, I'm uh, giving it a try tomorrow in the amateurs. So. You realize the things they're throwing actually weigh more than you, right? Or yeah. are you being thrown? Uh, potentially, but it's all in the way you act. And uh, I'm coming out like Braveheart. I think I'm going to intimidate a lot of them. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. ki I killed him He's shots. He's terribly it's intimidating, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how does somebody get involved in the heavy events then? Oh, uh, usually you've been dropped as a child and uh, <laughs> gives you that, that mental state in order to go. It, it's, uh, I actually started uh, about 11 years ago and it was more on a dare. The, uh, I really didn't know they existed and uh, there was a local guy who wanted to put on a games and he kind of put a dare out in the uh, local paper, are you man enough for a kilt? So I said, well, I'd like to try this. And, Jumped on it and really enjoyed it. So and you throw something that's 150 pounds and you're doing it in a kilt. Hey. Nobody makes fun of you, do they? Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only once. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then they get thrown. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, Jim, uh, what else can we uh, expect this weekend down at Topaz Park? Well, besides the heavy events, we've got a huge uh, range of activities. It's all a family-oriented um, uh, festival. Uh, kids under 12 are free, and we're trying to promote families to come in. But we have everything from pipe band competitions to sack races, tug-of-war, falconry, sword fighting, highland dancing, music, dance. It goes on and on, both yeah. days, Saturday and Sunday. Well, uh, highland dancing is really beautiful. I had friends that did it as a kid, and I was so jealous. I thought, man... Why did I go into ballet? Not that well, there's anything wrong with ballet, but, you know, this uh, definitely... Well, I think you should come out Sunday, and we'll have you do a special performance for the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was going to be in Riverdance, but, uh, you know, I thought it was, I didn't want to show them up. No. Um, and there is a very special treat sitting over to my right. Oh, boy. There is Haggis inside the Q control room. Yeah, we've, we've, brought you, uh, we've brought you a Haggis um, fresh from uh, the ovens. Uh, Ors meats out in uh, Brentwood Bay puts them together for us. There, it's a traditional haggis uh, cooked in a sheep's stomach. You know, we've got the offal and we've got the uh, the liver and the heart and the lungs and oatmeal I like, I like and spices. How something actually called offal yeah. involved in haggis. Well, <laughs> so uh, we were talking uh, just before we came on air with Steph. Is that the the the, the serving and the the cutting of the uh, of the haggis is actually a, a very honored tradition, and so. Um, 
you will have that tradition. You're letting me do this. Wow, thank you. I am actually very honored. All right, Chris, bring it on over. I, I hope I don't, you know, mess this up because this is, like they were saying, a, a tradition here. It smells actually really good. But it's quite funny, for the last couple of days, everyone has been telling me, Oh, it tastes like this, and it, it tastes like this, and I've heard oatmeal. Slice it, Slice it that way? Okay. I've heard oatmeal and chicken. Uh, sure. Which... <laughs> 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 All right, so chicken. slice yeah, it down yeah, the middle yeah, here. Down okay. The there and, uh... All right. Scott James, by the way, is uh, hanging out right now, taking video, and I'm assuming this will be up on our uh, Facebook oh, yeah. page. Oh, that looks delicious. I think all the heavy events want to eat. Uh, heavy event athletes want to <laughs> eat it stuff. Is this is this what uh, makes you guys nice and strong? So you're saying Steady I'll be able. Diet of haggis. Uh, so you're yeah. saying I'll be able to, to throw Chris uh, yes. in a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, so now that we have cut down the middle. Open her up. And, Open her up. Uh, okay. Should I cut all the way through? Oh sure. Okay. All right. Ooh, it's piping hot too. Hot from the ovens over at the Wells. Ooh, that smells good. It does actually smell really good. Why is everyone always, oh, you're trying haggis? It smells really, really good. See, and after today, you can serve this at Christmas, at Easter, you know, all your family events. Yes, yes, I'll check, I'll check with my family first on that. Uh, all right, so do I just, do I, do, <laughs> that's what it smells like, that's what it is. It is, it smells like meatloaf, and I happen to quite like meatloaf. Uh, do I just dig in, or like, I, I what do say, I do? Yeah, I mean, okay, uh, I didn't, I didn't know if there was a proper, okay, oh, here we go, all right. Oh, that's ooh, that's that's a that's, that's a I'm, <laughs> I'm greedy. <laughs> All right, here we go. And mm, hang on, <laughs> it's quite hot. Yes, it's totally fine. It does. It tastes like meatloaf. It not, tastes like really good meatloaf, actually. It's not bad. No, it is not. <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh my! You know what? I'm just. I'm. You know, I already took that piece out, so I think we're just gonna have to have a little more. Everyone was trying to yes. scare me with the haggis. That was wonderful. Uh, you're in now. I am in now, and you know what? I'm gonna pass that around the room so everyone else can uh, take a shot. And then, uh, Chris, don't go too far. Cause apparently, now that I've had the haggis, I can throw you. I'll be back. All right. <laughs> and I do believe we have a pair of tickets to give away, I understand. Yes, a pair of tickets to this weekend. So if you okay. want to be caller number 9 to 475 1003. You got the number. I got the number this right. You've only yeah. worked here for 10 years. All right. So, so we will take caller number 9. And thanks very much, guys, for, um, for coming in and, and bringing the haggis. I'm really actually glad I tried that. And don't go too far with that because it, it's actually really good. And now, on with the show. Congratulations to Paul. He was caller number nine. Picks himself up a pair of tickets for the Highland Games this weekend at Topaz Park. Still with us, the haggis. And uh, everybody eating it. Okay, I have to ask, now that I have had the haggis, what is actually in it? <laughs> Nobody wants no to actually explain it. Okay, so... Um, as I understand it, it's um, it's sheep's liver, sheep heart, sheep lungs, um, oatmeal, spices. There is oatmeal in there. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It holds it together. Oh, you know? I guess so. And yeah. uh, and it's then it's cooked in a, a sheep stomach, or a beef bung. I had to look that up on the internet. But um, at any rate, and uh, it's it's quite tasty. And it it's is traditional. And uh, and if people come up to the Highland Games this weekend, they can eat, they can have a taste of haggis, or if they feel they can hurl it. We have a little contest where throw. you can throw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just to well, make it clear, I guess hurl. hurling is not necessarily the literal yes. translation of what you no, think you'll no, be doing. The, yes. the, the throwing of the haggis, which is not a traditional um, Highland Games sport, but nevertheless, we, we've made it in Victoria. So, we, you know, you can either throw a haggis or you can eat a haggis. So. <laughs> now, how did the haggis hurling come about? <laughs> Jim. <laughs> uh, the games are all about showing the spectacle and sport and having a bit of fun having once fun, in a while. Yeah. So we're not throwing a real haggis we wouldn't waste it but something that replicates the look of a haggis and the kids love it and you stand it's heavy. On, yeah yeah it's, it's a lot of fun and uh that's a free event that the kids all line up for and have a great time <laughs> win t-shirts with a 
Screaming haggis on the back of it. Yes. Now, uh, the parade. Have you already had the parade or is that today? We had the parade last, last uh, night. Right. Last night. But on uh, Sunday, uh, we actually have two opening ceremonies. One on Saturday at 1230 for the Canadian Championships. And then on Sunday for the sort of the official games. But on Sunday, we'll have um, uh, about a dozen pipe bands. Uh, doing a mass bands up the hill, and uh, this year, uh, our first year, we're having it. We're having an international drum major championship. So we brought up uh, three or three of the top uh, drum majors in the world, including the world champion. And these are the um, men that lead the pipe bands, and they have the mace, but they don't just move it around and hold it up and down. They throw it in the air, 30 or 40 feet, and catch it as they're marching. Wow. And it's a spectacle that hasn't been seen in Victoria, but on both days, Saturday and Sunday, you you will see it. It will be really special. There is talent all over this festival, is there not? It, yeah, pipe bands. Uh, we have uh, six-time world champion Simon Fraser University pipe band coming and uh, Delco Triumph Street, who yep. finished sixth in the world. So we have two of the best pipe bands in the world here. Yeah, I went to SFU for a couple of years, and uh, I never mind. I never minded convocation time. Because you always heard the pipe band going through the school. It was really neat. Yeah, we've got clan tents. We've got military heritage performances, falconry, sword fighting, on and on and on. Uh, like I said, kids under 12 are free. And once you get in, uh, there's free kids events. They can do many events, many heavy events, uh, sack races, kilted runs. And we have a, a kilted mile run on Saturday for for joggers in town. We have quite a crowd. <laughs> the only uh, uh, way to get in is you have to wear a kilt and run a mile. Oh boy, Chris, you're the uh, oh, you're, you're the fastest runner here at the Rock Research Center. Well, I'll so. give that a try. I'm also doing the heavy events on Saturdays, so um, it's going to be fun. McHugh's Roadie, Chris Loren, part of the fun this weekend at the Highland Games and Celtic Festival down at Topaz Park. And uh, more details can be found through our events page at theq.fm. Thanks very much, guys, for coming in and uh, sharing your stories and, uh, and, of course, the haggis. I appreciate it. Have fun this weekend, guys. Thanks, Steph. Thank you. All right. Now, this guy apparently uh, just released some partially obstructed view tickets for his was sold out show June 15th at the Save on Foods Memorial Center. You can check selectertickets.com to find out what is still left. This is Brian Adams, Heat of the Night on 100.3 The Q. This is the island's home.